Hi, right, guys, Mad Max 6, and we are back with the doc. It's the first show of 2017, doc. Welcome back to your show, man. <laughs> Our show. <laughs> Definitely your show, more than mine. Thank you. So we had some great questions uh, uh, this time, uh, and um, because I don't like to read the long question, because I stumble, I'm sure people have noticed, I'm going to have you read the first two questions, and I'll go ahead with the rest, but uh, go ahead, take it away. You got doc. it. This is definitely a long one. Um, it says, hey, Dave and Dr. Rand, thanks for the show and all the valuable information. I have a few questions. When someone is put on TRT, or if someone chooses to do a steroid cycle, would you recommend to start an aromatase inhibitor the day of your first injection, or would you start it before the injection at, say, one milligram a day of Arimidex? There isn't much online stating the best method, just lots of bro science from people's personal experience. Definitely would love some real medical advice on this one. This one's fairly easy. You know, the only reason for having an aromatase inhibitor would be if you're producing too much excess, well, that's redundant, uh, excess uh, estrogen from testosterone. So typically, at least in my experience and in my practice, I use what I call a prophylactic dose of, and I prefer an aromatase inhibitor, but a, a, an estrogen blocker, as they say, whenever I introduce someone to replacement therapy, because the testosterone levels are definitely going to go up. And typically, as a result, the body's going to produce more estrogen along with that uh, increased testosterone level and as we age for reasons we don't necessarily understand we just know it happens we produce more and more estrogen from that testosterone uh, again as we get older and older maybe it's evolution and you know mother nature wanting us to stay home and nest and become more um, estrogen like if you will you know to be an ester or whatnot but anyway it does happen and uh, it's not the best thing for us uh, we've already talked about many times how excess estrogen could be a problem I think in, in looking in, uh, around the internet and talking to some of my, my peers, I'm probably on the more, not probably, definitely on the more aggressive side when it comes to estrogen control. Although with a dose, uh, again, a prophylactic dose, I call it, of about one milligram every other day, I keep people on average, I'd say most, in that 15 to 20 picogram per milliliter range of estradiol. And I think that's probably the point of contention. Uh, some of my colleagues think, well, you know, as long as you're within that lab core is zero to 42 range uh, of estradiol, um, you're okay. Um, again, my biggest point, not to belabor what we've already talked about, but um, aside from the side effects, if you're lucky enough not to have excess water retention or moodiness and irascibility, we know that the genes for prostate cancer, which all of us men have, are activated by estrogen. So, you know, we want just enough, but no more than we need. To answer this uh, gentleman's question, um, you don't need any Arimidex on board until you've got the excess, I don't want to say excess, but until you have the testosterone on board. Again, we've talked about this before, everyone should know by now, right, that uh, estrogen is made from testosterone, so that's the connection there. So do you need to start in advance? No. Uh, as a matter of fact, once you, and I typically use injection, but once you start treating yourself with testosterone, certainly with the... Uh, esterified forums, it's going to take a while for that testosterone to be broken up and make it into the bloodstream. So, you know, if you did an injection first thing in the morning to start, uh, arguably you wouldn't need your uh, first dose of an astrazole until the following day, maybe that night just to be careful. It all depends. Everyone's a little different, but um, suffice to say, when you start the testosterone, that's when you start your astrazole. You don't have to do it in advance, which I think is the only thing he's asking there. Uh, the second part of the question is, uh, Dr. Rand, I was diagnosed with Reiter's syndrome slash reactive arthritis three months ago after a long 10 months of being underdiagnosed. Wow, that's a bummer. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, with such a rare condition that ultimately has ruined my vision, balance, and as of recent, my joints and my ability to recover. I just recently have been put on an injectable biologic called Enbrel or Enterocept or Enterocept. Um, my question is, do you know if there are any interactions with testosterone and Enbrel, Humira, or any other biologic? No, not that I'm aware of. 
remember, it's pretty easy to go through these, although it's always a good idea to, to talk to your doctor for sure. Uh, but we're just resetting the clock in terms of hormones. So if you're 40 and you're on replacement therapy and it takes you back to the same amount of testosterone you had when you were 20, what would be the contraindication to being younger, so to speak? I'm, I'm oversimplifying it, and I don't mean to necessarily, but I think it applies, at least with testosterone, pretty much across the board. There are no contraindications that I've ever been aware of for testosterone use with some uh, caveat there, for example, um, if someone has polycythemia rubavera, where they, it's, a, it's a pathologic process in which someone just creates a lot more red blood cells than normal, than you would normally. So your hematocrit and your uh, hemoglobin are always uh, above normal, and it can be a problem. It can make for blood which is too viscous and can create a uh, risk of stroke, etc. That's when you give blood, right? Well, that's one of the treatments, but... Uh, you know, I spoke with, uh, I've spoken to more than one hematologist about it, and they make a good point. I, I always just, well, you know, it's, it's a pretty easy trade. You want to feel good and just, okay, it's more trips to the phlebotomist, but um, we don't know the answer. So I don't want to say that in talking with a hematologist, we have a consensus, but they present a good point, at least a, a few that I've talked to. If someone's producing that many red blood cells over and over and over again, remember they're produced in the, in the bone marrow, there's a risk of, because of that overproduction, creating a fibrotic condition within the, the bone marrow. And I'd never thought of that. It's not proven, it's theoretical, but you know, it's not, you, you wanna consider everything you can that we know of before you go off and do something. It is a consideration. Mm. I've never seen, I have one patient who has polycythemia ruvera. I've seen him come in here with um, uh, a hemoglobin, I remember, I don't remember the hematocrit, but of 26, which is really, really high. And he was getting along just fine. Um, whether he's on testosterone replacement therapy or not, he has to get uh, frequent phlebotomies, therapeutic phlebotomies. And they don't ever seem to be, um, uh, what's the word, uh, related to anything. They don't correlate necessarily to anything. In other words, for a couple months, he'll have to get them every couple weeks, and then boom, it kind of goes away. That's, I think that's the nature mm. of the disease itself. But anyway, I'm digressing a lot, I realize. For the most part, though, there are no contraindications with uh, hormone replacement therapy because if there were, and I hesitate to use common sense in medicine, I'm not being a Weisenheimer, but it's just knowledge is your, your safest uh, bet when it comes to medicine, not you know, um, taking a theory and, uh, or, or I shouldn't say taking something we know and extrapolating in, into a theory uh, just through common sense. But... Um, I, I don't see any reason why this gentleman would have a problem with Reiter's syndrome. The only issue, if you use excessive amounts of androgens, there are some studies showing that it can reduce your immune system. So in this case, because this is an autoimmune dis disorder where your immune system is overreacting, that could actually help theoretically. Again, careful with that. Uh, but I don't see it as being a problem. Uh, and I think, you know, because this can settle in the joints and whatnot, as we know from just anybody who's got, uh, whether it's um, psoriatic arthritis or autoimmune uh, disorders or just um, uh, arthritis from degeneration, keeping the, the joint in place, if you will, keeping it um, uh, held in place, uh, what am I trying to say? Um, Keeping it stable is one of the best things you can do. So having your testosterone levels high enough to keep you active and keep muscle on your frame could only be a good thing. Um, but again, I would, I would talk to the doctor. There's certainly no contraindication with uh, some of the medications he mentions, which are those that are going to tame the immune system, turn it down a bit. Uh, he goes on to say, these drugs are more popular as I see them advertised every day, but have not found any information with testosterone in these medications. Also, would one be more susceptible to infection from injection due to the lowered immune system from these biologics? Real quick, not if they're applied properly. In other words, they want to beat down your immune system because it's overreacting, that's the autoimmune function. But if it's all done properly, they're not gonna reduce your immune system so much. Is that easy to do? No, and there's the rub. So it's possible, yes, that the use of Enbrel so that he doesn't suffer from 
the uh, side effects of the Reiter syndrome could um, lower his immune system enough so he might be more apt to infection. But, you know, if you use aseptic technique, you know, you use your alcohol swab before you give yourself an injection, uh, that's fairly low on the list of risks, if you will. Um, so I, I don't see it as a, as a major complication or risk at all. But yeah, theoretically, uh, whenever you beat down your immune system, if you beat it down below normal with some of these drugs, you could increase your chance of uh, infection. Uh, he goes on, I was preparing for a local natural bodybuilding competition before I got s incredibly sick and lost well over 20 pounds of muscle mass. I've always been around 8% body fat and still am just as lean, so I'm sure the weight loss or the weight I lost was due to atrophy and with my condition, I don't heal even half as fast as I used to when I train every muscle group twice a week with one day off a week from training. I felt superhuman and now I'm lucky to get in three days a week because I get what feels like tennis elbow every time I train hard in the gym and can't even bring a water bottle to my mouth due to the pain in my joints after training. Bummer. Um, do you think testosterone would help with recovery? Recovery definitely, when it comes to muscle recovery, I, I don't think testosterone is going to help you with your joints. Although, uh, you'll, I, I think this gentleman uh, sounds young. I think uh, yeah. he is. But uh, as you get older, the whole thing about use or lose it and, and keeping it moving definitely falls into play. I'm not sure if uh, it might be aggravating your condition to move a lot, but I can tell you, as someone who's older, you definitely want to keep moving. So anything that keeps you moving actually helps your joints feel better, not worse, for the most part. Um, he mentioned his name towards the end, I think. Okay. I know that's an obvious answer with the average person, but do you think, well, the average older person for sure, <laughs> but do you think it would have the same effect with someone who has had their own body attacking itself, causing all this pain and inflammation systemically? Thanks, Dr. Rand. Wish more doctors were like, okay, you're going to make me blush. I went 10 months of being told I was crazy depressed because they never found the numbers to say I had an infection or was sick. I didn't have the numbers, so to them I wasn't sick when I knew I was. <laughs> Don't get me started. Uh, how a doctor could say there was white blood cells and red blood cells in my urine and say they don't think anything is wrong or associated with how I feel is beyond me. Agreed. There are good ones and bad ones, man. Uh, sorry for the extremely long question slash sob story. Hey, man. And this is why you're reading it. Yeah, no, but it's, <laughs> Not it's, it's an unfortunate story. And if, uh, if, if, if I can help, certainly I'd like to. Uh, love the show. Your information is so important. I hope many people find your, own, uh, your show to read all the bro science and guessing people uh, do on f forums online. P.S. I'm 23 years. Oh, wow. Okay. See, yeah. 23 years old, so I know I shouldn't do steroids or self medicate, <laughs> but I just recently got back into weight training and the pain is horrific. I have a daughter due any day and I've promised myself oof, I won't squat, deadlift, or bench press any less than my own body weight. If I can lift myself, I'll always be able to hold her. Like I said, it's pretty dumb to... This is really sad, man. I know. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Anyway, um, I guess I should just finish. Um, if I can lift myself, I'll always be able to hold her. Like I said, I know it's pretty dumb to self-medicate or resort to steroids, but it's a last resort as it's the only thing I know that's proven medically to help recover. This embryo may not work for me, and there aren't any more options after this. Well, let me just stop there. It, it, yeah, the embryo may not work, or any of these things that are going to modulate his immune system down. It should help, and from what I remember uh, with writers, you can, it, it could be self-limiting, it could be chronic, you never know. So I would never give up. I mean, this could, it, it starts from an infection, typically, and, you know, you and I might get a bacterial infection and then re rid our bodies of it and no, no more issues. With someone who has um, uh, one of these uh, antigens, it's an HLA uh, antigen that's specific to, like, people that have rheumatoid arthritis or whatever. Um, these people will continue to fight this infection, which is now gone, somewhere else, and it floats around the body. In this case, what I would consider doing, make sure you rid yourself of the infection. I don't know what kind of care he's getting, but one thing is make sure that you've done your antibiotics typically, uh, like a tetracycline or something, to get rid of whatever infection you normally uh, first had. Not normally, but whatever you first had. That's a normal way of treating this. Make sure you, you, you've gotten rid of the infection, and then 
uh, you know, go on to, to treat the symptoms as, as he already is. But um, I don't think the testosterone is going to help the disease process itself. It's going to help the symptoms. I mean, as I said, just getting the body moving can, can be good. And as long as it's not too painful to do that, either during or afterwards, I would think uh, the, the measure would be over a 24-hour period. Do you feel better having done some exercise than not? And uh, So young, huh? man. Yeah, and I don't know how you know what your testosterone levels are at 23 years old already. This could be affecting your, your hormones. This is the stress itself. I would consider uh, speaking with a doctor who might promote your own production if it is off, uh, not by replacement therapy, but using something like HCG to get your own testicles functioning so you can maintain fertility. And, um, you know, it just seems like a, a much smarter long-term play for the short term. In other words, yeah, we're all going to have testicles that aren't functioning at some point in life. But at 23, for the long term, at least for the next 10, 20 years, hopefully, you know, I consider keeping your own testicular function rather than replacing it. Um, yeah. And I don't see how, you know, anabolics would help at all in, in – because uh, this isn't going to really – I mean – you know, we talk about decadroblin yeah. as uh, helping with shoulder pain and stuff like that. That's mm -hmm. not because it's actually healing the pain. It's actually masking. It's masking the pain. Yeah. So uh, that would be the only reach there for anabolics. But um, anyway, um, I think that's the yeah. Continue to consult with your rheumatologist about testosterone. See what he thinks about it. That's the, one of the best things you can do. Um, and keep asking if you're not happy with your doctor, like we, you know, we've joked many times, if you come into a doctor's office and, and you're complaining about something and he looks at the reports and tells you, well, there's nothing wrong with you, then go find another doctor because yeah. you're there because there's something wrong. And if right. you can't find it, don't let him tell you, well, there's nothing wrong with you. That's ridiculous. Don't take one opinion. Yeah. You're okay with it. So, so keep looking. And I, I, like I say, it could be self-limiting. It could go away. So don't give up. I mean, he's still pretty young. Yeah. Um, Oh, he says one more question. Uh, <laughs> He's milking it. <laughs> thanks, Dave. Your YouTube channel rocks. One more question I forgot to ask. Dr. Rand, how would you recommend people who live in states who can't get blood work to get blood work before and during a cycle from a private lab like myself who lives in New York and cannot get blood work from a private lab by law? If I ask my GP to do the blood work, then I'll either have to make up some symptoms I don't have, which I don't want to do, or be honest and have me being a steroid user on my medical records for life if I choose to take testosterone. Simple question, uh, the simple answer to that question is there are services online for PMD, uh, discount labs, uh, even Life Extension Foundation. Now, I don't know how that's regulated in the state of New York. Obviously, the internet is worldwide. Uh, I don't know if they would, I don't know how they would check that or enforce that or what the laws are in terms of your being able to use an online service. But there are plenty uh, or enough that you can go to where you don't need a doctor's requisition. Uh, That's good to know. You don't have to go. Yeah. But uh, for PMD, I'm associated with them. Discount Labs, uh, indirectly associated with them. Uh, find the cheapest one. And, and I said Life Extension Foundation. Uh, I think they're actually, I'm not related to them at all, but I think they're pretty fair also, but find, find a, a, the cheapest one and yeah, uh, monitor definitely, definitely would help. Th those are all the questions. Nice. I hope <laughs> that helps. Thanks Dr. Ryan.